Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and we're back for the final episode of season three of the Rule 34 podcast. Second part, I forgot to mention it was the final episode in the part video. This is part two, because now I am joined by... El Dominic Castillo. Yes, Dominic has joined us. Dom, how have yeah, you man. been, my man? Uh, I have been pretty, pretty pog champ. Uh, uh so in terms of the work side, absolutely nothing has been going on. I'll be honest with you. I haven't worked a single day in, I think, about two months now, I think. Dang. So, so yeah. Um, I'm surprised I'm still being able to, you know, pay stuff off, whether it be my insurance or, you know, gas for my car. Anyways, anyways. Um, nothing much else has been going on. Uh, my dorm applications for school uh, are almost here. In other words, I'm close to getting a contract offer uh, for me to get a dorm and potentially free parking too, which is normally one of the most hardest things to do over at Berkeley. Uh, what, because, you know, Berkeley in and of itself is like a very tight-knit, you know, with tight-knit streets and parking in and of itself is really difficult as the majority of the streets are metered off and... Uh, tickets are very high over there. Not only that, but patrol and police, they're, they're, they're very adamant about, you know, getting anyone who's even, a, like, you know, five minutes over the, the parking limit. But, yeah, aside from that, uh, I'm just, you know, I guess I'm just doing what I have uh, this summer vacation. It's not, it's not much, but uh, as of recently, I'm not sure if Gio already talked about this. I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, Gio and I have recently gone to the Anime Expo of 2023 at the Cabeja Center here in downtown Los Angeles. And it was one of the most coolest shit uh, being in person, being one of the first ones to go there, technically. Going there at 5 in the morning was an absolute hassle as we had to wait in line for 5 hours just to be one of the first ones there. It was one of the most coolest grandiose things I've got to experience uh, I guess being here and stuff um, the, the, the the line in of itself was pretty crazy everybody there was absolutely hyped Gio was kind of tired already by the fourth hour I was still happy just to be there standing with a whole crowd of people who were, you know with the similar interests as pretty much everyone else in the community. And it, it was cool as fuck. Uh, Bro, language. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, cool as fudge, my bad. I, you know, I, I like fudge. Chocolate fudge is really good. I also went to Porto's. I got myself a, a fudge muffin or something like that, whatever. It was good. Aside from that, the expo in of itself was really good. I saved myself a good $1,000 I spent around three quarters of that, so you know it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. A good, a good lot of money was spent, but I mean, it, you know, it's really just once in a you know yearly thing. So I enjoyed it for what it was. I was happy. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, apparently, so that the expo in and of itself, people are saying that it was probably one of the worst organized events. Uh, of this year in terms of the expo in and of itself because people are saying that what was it what was it that the lines were horrible firefighters had to be called in so as to control the uh, the population over there i think uh it exceeded over a hundred thousand people and i think the expo in and of itself sold way too many tickets than they should have and so you know i mean for us for us it didn't matter as much because we we got there very early I wanted to go at 2 in the morning, but uh, parking limitations at the time were uh, in place, so people wouldn't get there way too early, so as to cut in line uh, and, you know, not reserve any space for any, uh, uh, you know, any of the workers, security staff, and all those people. Uh, on the other hand, we got in pretty fast. We got in at 5 exactly. We got there. It was cool. I liked it. I enjoyed it. We went there. We waited all the way till 5, till 10. Which is the, the exact time that the place opened up, and we got into the ex exhibition hall. It was pretty cool, uh, a bunch of anime stuff, and then we went to the the cheeky eighteen and plus section. I got a bunch of books from a couple of artists that I actually do enjoy, 
Um, the AT and Plus section, I'm surprised had a lot of people. Uh, I won't talk about more about the content over there, but I think you already know what kind of stuff over there. And anyways, anyways. Um, aside from the expo in of itself, uh, I've just been chilling, doing not much. I'll be honest. I've been working with my parents on the side, so I guess I'm technically been working. Just technically not getting paid for it, but I mean, I'm I'm honestly cool with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been cool, it's been cool, hopefully I get to go to the next year's Anime Expo, but I'm gonna have to think about it, because the only reason I went this year, is because I wanted to see a game company that I really wanted to see, but they didn't come this year, I thought they were, but they canceled last minute, uh, because of reasons that are way too much to explain at the moment. But I guess to put it in shorter words, uh, development issues, and they're not ready to show off any final more products per se. That was understandable. I'm like, fuck, okay. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. That time I did. That, that time I did uh, swear, and I and I apologize again. Uh, but yeah, it, it sucked. Honestly, it sucked not being able to see them. They, they came last year, but I well, obviously I didn't go last year, but this year I did. Next year I hope they go. If not, well, it's going to be difficult to think about, considering I'm going to have to make the drive from L. Uh, if if all goes well, I would have to make the drive from Berkeley all the way down to here. And I have to go drive all the way back once the expo is over. Oh. Well, technically, you'd be on summer break next year. I, I would be, yeah. But, I mean, I would just say I would have to drive back and forth from Berkeley down to L.A. Mm, I guess and, and stuff. Um Unless I would be planning to stay home for a bit, I mean, I could. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Uh, yeah, but also depends if I'm going to be taking any summer classes because you never know. You never mm. know. You never know. True. You never know. Um, hopefully, I hopefully I don't get into summer school. But if I do, well, it is what it is. I, uh, I have to admit my losses in terms of if if my grades go down. Uh, aside from that, uh, yeah, all is uh, sort of well, sort of okay. Nothing is bad. Just today, I just dropped off my brother. Uh, he, he went off to Six Flags. Pretty long drive. I apologize for, for my late uh, arrival to the podcast today. Uh, but I made it. I made it, at least. Uh, yes. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll, Dom, I'll, let, me, let me ask you this. I asked Gio, so I got to ask you. What's up, what's up? Did it smell at the Anime Expo? Gio said he couldn't tell because he had a mask, and yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't tell as well. Because uh, what I, I was explaining, I, I was explaining to did. Gio that a lot of people online have said like that it smelled there. Well, because that's just the running joke that it just smells there. But if, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's true. I mean, it's a, it's a but it's a hot day in LA. There's a hundred thousand people shoulder to shoulder, back to back. God knows if. You know, they're properly showered or put on deodorant or, you know. Got good hygiene, um, essentially. Good hygiene, just just overall good hygiene. Who knows if they have, you know, clean clothes and all that stuff. And, you know, we're sweating. People in their cosplays. Uh, some, you know, some are people, I mean, some people are wearing, like, heavy suits and stuff like that. Some are wearing tuxedos, some are wearing furry costumes. So those guys are sweating even more, which only makes things even worse for everybody else who has to you know, stand nearby and smell. It's not good, you know. For, for uh, Joe and I did wear masks, so we didn't. We literally smelled nothing the entire time, uh, except for uh, you know the, the hot dogs we got to smell before. Aside from that, the we didn't smell that much. No. Okay. Okay. What's it called? Uh, and then Gio was talking about uh, the art. You know, like that was the main section he was interested in. What did you think about some of the artists you saw there? Dude, the artist uh, alley was absolutely crazy beans, dude. Um, I'm gonna later show off a uh, an Instagram post showing off some of the, the art I bought. But the artist alley in it of itself was an absolute blast to go through. Uh, however, at the time we uh, we were already in like what a good three hours into the expo, and that at the time we were starving and our legs were hurting. Well, I wasn't starving, but Gio was. Uh, there was a lot of artists, a lot of people with really good art. It, it was pretty expensive, not going to lie. People were, uh, the majority of the prices were going from like 20 to $30 per artwork. 
And for some reason, a lot of them also were selling with like buy two, get one free. I'm not sure why that was like the standard for the majority of the artists, but the majority of them had that sort of like offer, which uh, I mean, I, I guess that's cool. Uh, but it, there was so many different artists with so many different like talents, uh, you know, with, with their art styles and, you know, the craftsmanship. A lot of people were selling keychains, some were uh, selling uh, posters, some were selling banners, some were selling postcards and, and it, it was it was so it was a huge wide variety uh but the lines dude it was really bad it was horrible the last artist uh which was a main artist director for the main game company i originally wanted to come through and see had a line of him uh for himself which lasted a good like 10 15 minutes just to get uh, you know, an artist commission and just to get one of his own like books and art and stuff like that. It was it was an absolute just no, it, it was horrible. It was really bad. It was really bad. There was lines blocking other lines from getting through other artists. Not only that, but you had the whole crowd of people just walking through just to look around to see what you know what artists they, they want to stop by. Uh, apparently, this was the, the most crowded event for this year's uh, anime expo. Meaning that I'm assuming last year was way more organized than what we went through, but it was really bad. Uh, and we went through the entire, all through all the alleys, or I guess alleys, through, through all the aisles per se. Uh, and we we got a, a lot, a good amount of things that caught our eye. Uh, G also did too. Uh, he also really he, I, I, he got some uh, what was it? Some posters. He got some postcards. Uh, I forgot what else he got, but he got a, he got a good amount of things. I myself got also got a good amount of things. Um, yeah, and I, I, the, uh, it was also a little funny thing I also noticed is that there uh, at the end of the aisles there was like this little food area court. No, it was not much of a food court, but a little court of uh, so you can get some snacks. And there was a single. I think there was like one or two single uh, like uh, pretzel carts. And just for a pretzel cart, I felt bad for the single person that was working in that pretzel cart because there was an entire row of people full of cosplayers, fangoers, and all that stuff. Like a huge line just for pretzels. And I felt bad for the guy who had to stand there just selling off pretzels to a huge line of people who were nonstop coming in just for some food. And it's just, oh man, I felt bad for the staff. Uh, not only that, but that same day, the first day, Hotels, uh, hotel workers went on strike and went on to protest that they didn't want to work without, you know, higher wages for these huge events. Apparently, uh, hotel uh, staff were definitely not present for the, the, the huge, uh, I guess, Influx. amount of people that were coming in. And it was bad. It was bad. Apparently, there was also an active shooter as well in Little Tokyo at the time, too. I heard about that. So, yeah, it was, um... Not good times, but good times as well. It was the best times, it was the worst times. Very true, very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm glad to hear you had fun. Definitely sounds like it was a lot of fun. Definitely sounds like definitely something you need to go into with a smart sort of financial mind, in a sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one thing I was talking about with Joe. I was like, man, you definitely, like, it was definitely take a lot of thought and effort to uh want to uh like spend the money you know like it probably takes like a lot of like like talking yourself into doing it you know right 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 you got like, a point you got a but man, man it definitely sounds like such a crazy event and i was telling you you know i would recommend people like go to as many events like this as possible because it seems like they're on the like decline, you know. True, it's like it's like a E three. Yeah, know? that's uh, what I was telling off. Gio that like I don't think E three is happening this year. I can't remember about Comic Con, and I was saying them, you know, so many of these companies are doing their own little ones instead of all under like one umbrella, you know, a sense. Yeah, like you know, like Marvel has their own reveal events. Blizzard has BlizzCon, you know. I know a lot of people are going to be like, some of these companies have been doing it for a while, but like, I'm just mentioning, you know, like that a lot of these companies kind of like streaming services are deciding to do their own rather than being under one singular service, you know? Ooh. And you're kind of seeing that with expos and conventions like this where like you're rarely seeing them happen. 
that, that is. And it's kind of sad in a way because like it, it, it was like a huge thing, like growing up was hearing about like all the people that like attended E3, Comic Con, uh, even some of like the the conventions that were like more tournament, like um, oh gosh, what was the main one for Smash Bros? I forget what it was called. Uh, it wasn't. Oh my gosh. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember what it was called, but like you know, like all these play, all these things are kind of like on the decline, you know. And like, COVID was somewhat like the cause of it, but like how I mentioned before, a lot of it is also just uh, a lot of it is just these companies wanting to do their own thing rather than uh, rather than you know being under one umbrella together, you know. Yeah. Man. But, I mean, seeing the amount of people that came here, I feel like Anime Expo... Okay, okay I think Anime Expo is a bit of on a, on a decline in terms of management and a crowd control. But in terms of ticket sales, I think they blew the mark. I, I think they're still going to keep on going until next year. I mean, they're already planning next year, uh, looking at over at their, their little booklet that they gave to everybody for free. Uh, oh, see you guys next year. I mean, they already, they already have the next year in the books, Hmm. But yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Hmm. I think another thing too that I mean, a lot of people will, will probably just chalk it up to us getting older, having our own money to spend, yada yada yada. But uh, I have noticed that lately, you know, the three of us, as well as like uh, our friend group, and just it seems like in general, like a lot of us are getting back to sort of that that point of like normalcy to the point where like we're going to like more of these events, you know, like. We're going to more concerts. We're going to more. We're going to see movies more often together. You know, you guys are going to like anime expo. Like, you know, there's all these different things that we're just choosing to go to. You know. Yeah, it's a bit of that financial freedom we get now with cars and we have licenses and a little bit of money here and there. And that's that's the cool thing. That's cool. Yeah, growing up little by little. Mm. And I think the other thing, too, is somewhat like the advice you hear a lot of people give to, like, young people like us. It's, like, save money, obviously. Like, don't just go spending whatever money you have. But also, like, spend it while you can, you know, while you don't have to worry about, like, the financial burdens of, like, supporting yourself or supporting a whole family, you know? Like, we're in school... A majority of a majority of it, thank God, is paid off through financial aid, you know. And uh, you know, we're lucky to have family members that support us, you know, still because we're in school, you know. And they're able to like we're able to like you mentioned, have this sort of financial stability where we can afford to, you know, attend such events, you know. Yeah. Especially because, like, I think back to like all the things that like. I personally, like, missed either through because of, like, money, but also just, like, you know, essentially growing as a person, you know, where, like, I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to go now, you know? Right. Like, uh, I, I think the plan is still in play. I, there's a concert I'm planning to go to, like, in August, and, like, I'm going by myself. Like, I'm not going with anyone else, so it's, like, it's going to be my, going to my first concert on my own, you know? That's pretty cool, man. Hmm. And then not only that, but it's like, along with that, it's like, I've gone with other people, but like, I've, I'm so used to doing everything with my family that it, it was really, it was really odd in a sense going to that Twice concert with Gio and it was literally just the two of us, you know? Right. right. So like, it feels kind of odd at times, but like, at the same time, it's like, you got to get out of your comfort zone and especially like, you know, uh, how do I want to put it? Like, get comfortable with doing things alone like i know a lot of people especially online try and make it like a weird thing but like there's nothing really wrong with like doing things either by yourself you know or like maybe with like one only one other person you know like i've seen people say oh it takes like a lot of confidence to like eat by yourself at like a restaurant but like why is that weird you know if you want food from a certain place why are you gonna stop yourself from going there just because it's only you you know yeah. Like, let's say if one day I wanted Denny's, it's like, and no one else wanted to go, or like, 
there was no one else like I could ask to go with. You know, it's like if I want Denny's that badly, why would I not go and just be like, oh, table for one? Right, right. right. But definitely, right. what's it called? Uh, I definitely like this whole approach that we've had in this new year. That like we're just having more, giving ourselves more freedom. You know. Yeah. And I definitely think you can track that through this podcast where you just see it's like more like obviously at the beginning of this podcast, it was COVID. So like we weren't going out at all, but like just like looking at like it's only we're, we're into the the seventh month of the year and looking at how much we've done this year is honestly pretty crazy. You know, like we you and I, Dom, we've gone to two wrestling shows together this year. You know, we went with Gio in January. Uh, I've gone to three wrestling shows in this year alone when my entire life I've never been to one, you know? Right, right, right. Like, that's something crazy to me, that I'm, I've am i gone to three wrestling shows, something that, like, for a majority of my life I was interested in, and I just never went, and, like, here I am, I've attended three in in the span of what was, like, six, maybe even five months. You know, I just think something like that is cool, you know? That is pretty awesome, man. And but, I hope we, we could get to do more things and stuff and stuff. Yeah, I don't know still, what. We still got five months left, you know? There's, there's a lot of movies coming out, potential concerts coming up. But then again, also, school's starting back up, so that's going to cut into time and also... It's gonna. It's really gonna test us in our responsibility, you know. Like that. I think that's something like I forgot to bring up a lot when talking with Gio. But like, school's gonna not only like cut into time, like, and like when I say I don't mean in a bad way, but like I'm saying, you know, like it's gonna really test us, and that's what I'm like, kind of most excited for going back to school is like getting back to a sort of formula in a sense, you know, like having. Yeah specifically scheduled times of like when I'm supposed to be doing certain stuff and then really testing myself on how much I've grown in the past couple of years to see if like you know I can trust myself to keep up with the school stuff and all the other stuff on the side you know because right. you know I, I give a lot of credit to you and Oscar Dom like with the way you guys do it like I, I just can't believe how much uh you guys are able to balance stuff and you let me know if I'm giving you too much credit, but like, especially you with doing all the classes and then working as well and whatever else goes on in your life. I'm always surprised that you're just able to get all that done. Um, yeah, honestly, I have no idea how I do it either. Uh, I, I guess I could give a bit of credit to it being online, uh, which has definitely helped me out a lot. If I were to be going, doing this stuff in person, I have honestly, I don't know how that would go. I mean, quite literally, this upcoming fall, I will literally see how I will push myself into seeing how I can balance work, school, and self, I guess, happiness. Um, that is going to be a little difficult. I could opt out of work and just pure study and just balance life and school. But for the now, now, no, yeah, it's, uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. When it comes to work and school, I, I kind of do them at the same time. If that makes sense. Like, sometimes when, uh, I mean, uh, actually, no, yeah, usually, usually most of the times, uh, a lot of my deadlines fall onto the same days in which I work. And I rarely ever call off uh, for work. So what I would do is, like, whenever there's, like, a break time in between, the, like, my work, uh, or maybe we have uh, a break. I will immediately just take out my phone and just like, let's say, work on an essay or work on a math problem, a coding problem, whatever, whatever. Uh, and while I'm at home, uh, sometimes, you know, I have to send out a message to one of the bosses about taking the day off or something. I have to, I don't, I don't know, just look at my schedule and seeing when I have my final exams coming up or when I have a homework deadline coming through or a project, you know, to finish. Uh, I just simply just know that, oh, hey, I work this day. Oh, hey, I don't work that day. So I could manage when I do homework and stuff like that. Uh, 
No, but I mean that's just that's just pretty much the basis I've been doing things. Uh, no, nothing too complicated uh, as to what I know. But uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. You know I, I just I just go through it, you know. And I somehow made it successfully, kind of technically, not really. But yeah, life life is uh, a crazy thing to go through, man. Not only that, but I mean going out during the 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 semester with work which was pretty crazy at times uh, I have no idea how I did it I'll be honest and now it being summer with no work at the moment and no school at the moment I I am just bored out of my mind I, I kind of just all I want to go out every day but the only problem being is that I'm risk looking for parking at night when I come back because usually all the parking spaces are filled up and I, I can't find park and gasoline too Gasoline. Very uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. It, I'm really excited for it all. And uh, I obviously hope the best for you in that transition. And uh, kind of, again, uh, transitioning here on the podcast. Uh, we could always talk about more stuff. Uh Right now, we still have a good amount of time, but uh, I'll, I'll sort of ask you now what I was asking Gio at the end, and, you know, I feel bad for Gio because him and I talked about so much stuff that I didn't get a lot of time to ask him about this, but we'll start off with this, Dom. How do you how do you reflect on this past season of the podcast, season three, from last year, June or July 3rd to this year? How do you, How do you overall feel about this season? Uh, I felt this season was uh, how would I say how would I say how would I, say? I, I don't think it was the same as last year. I feel like we definitely implemented some more of our I guess more mature thoughts per se in, in terms of any any uh, how would you say events that have been going on. We've definitely been able to talk more. Uh, I myself, admittedly, have not been present in some or at least on time per se. Uh, that's mostly because of just the personal things that just get in the way, and I, you know, I don't mean it intentionally. I try to get it as fast as I can, or I'm, you know, dozing off and sleeping. I'm barely waking up. Uh, I'll be honest, my sleepy schedule is absolutely horrible. That's because I wake, up, I stay up so late at night, just either playing games or doing homework. But that is also pretty much my fault. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, the topics at hand were pretty awesome. The movies. We watched, we're pretty, we're, we're, we're decent, they were okay. The music album reviews were also pretty cool. Uh, what else has been going on lately? Um, well, here, let, let me let me open the floor to this. And uh, I don't know if Gio's still here, but if he wants to hop in and speak as well, since, you know, we have more time and, you know, it obviously I feel kind of bad not giving him enough time to answer similar questions but uh looking at all the movies i'll read through the playlist as i speak and see them so there was prey the the um the predator series movie i think it was there was parasite um oh gosh uh there was bullet train there was barbarian not good there was whiplash classic yeah, that that one was a classic. Um, oh, I I totally missed it at the very start. Uh, I'll, I'll say this just because of your your language so far, Dom. There was Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what your opinions are, but just keep it family friendly. Yes. Um, there was Dunkirk, No Country for Old Men, and Dune twenty twenty one. Um. I'm trying to see. Sorry for trying to fill the dead air in. And then I think that was it. Oh, and then you saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3 on your own. Slapper. Absolute slap. What, 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 what would you say was your favorite from all the ones we reviewed this this season? Oof, oof. It's in between Bullet Train, Guardians, and Whiplash. It's between those three. I think I would agree as well. I really enjoyed Guardians 3, Whiplash. Though uh, it contains a lot of explicit language and honestly can get you maybe a bit upset with uh, the character in that movie, you know. But like, then again, you know, 
his, his whole character is sort of like it, it sparks its own discussion you know which is why i think it's a successful character you know like it sparks an overall discussion on on education in a sense and then right. um bullet train obviously was a classic from last year so funny so chaotic and so fast-paced you know and not only that but like it's one of the like few movies that like i i would personally say like has such a huge star-studded cast and is successful in its delivery you know yeah so i i definitely agree with you there that i i I think those three were probably like my favorite from the year as well yeah i also want to add parasite 2 into that group top four true uh but i don't know i don't know to pick one out of those movies i don't know dude i think i'm tied between bullet train and guardians like I don't know, Guardians 3 was just so good, dude, and, like, the whole trilogy as a whole is just, like, so amazing. I agree. Man, I don't, I don't know what to pick. I don't know what to pick. You obviously want to pick Thor Love and Thunder, man. Yes. That, that one scene with the kid with the floating head. <laughs> wow. Absolute cinema. Right there. <laughs> oh, man. Gio, are you here? Yeah, what's up, Doug? Mm. Well, what would you say from all the movies you reviewed this season would be your favorite? Um, well, it didn't really count as a review because one of us didn't watch it or refused to watch it. But at number one, I would put 20th Century Girl. That movie's a banger. At number two, probably Bullet Train. That movie's a banger. And number three, I would put... Um... Oh, I forgot the two anime movies we watched as well. Oh, yeah. That's on me. Did, did we review of Mice and Men? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think the boys got together to watch that in the Discord. Oh, yeah, I was not there. Mm, I'd probably give it to... Thor, Love, and Thunder. Yeah, man, why not? Ah. <laughs> uh, and then somebody has to like that movie. Somebody has to like. And then, uh, you know, Dom, this was something I mentioned to Gio because we were talking about at the end of our episode. I mentioned, you know, that like towards the end, I, I I don't think it's or I think it's fair to say what uh, like uh, what probably the three of us think is that uh, like the second half or not really this. I would say once we hit the new year. There was a big struggle, and that's just because there wasn't as much content, you know? Yeah. It's and, like, it's hard to put the blame on us when it's, like, there just wasn't a whole lot dropping, whether it was music or, like, movie-wise. Like, even when we'd go as a group to see a movie, we never really felt, like, the need to, like, discuss it, you know, sometimes. Right. So, like, we definitely, like, dropped off in content, I would say, afterwards, but... We still, I, like, looking through this playlist, I still feel like we got a lot done, and I really enjoyed a lot of it. Uh, I'm trying to see if there was, like, any music we reviewed. I know we reviewed uh, Hybrid Theory from Linkin Park. That was, like, a sort of retro review. We reviewed KSI's music. Geo had us do that one. I um, we reviewed Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. And... Uh, I, I'm trying to remember if we reviewed any other music, but oh, we did the Kid Cudi, the the album and movie review that he dropped like oh, together. I remember that. All right, and then uh, we also reviewed uh, Joey Badass's 2000 album. I for- see it's because since that was last year, I forgot that like it's a, I, I forget that the season is part of last year and this year, you know. But yeah, we nah. did that Joey Badass album as well. Um, obviously, if we were to ask what was the best album we reviewed, I'd obviously say Hybrid Theory because that's my number one album of all time. And plus, it's just an overall banger. Right behind it, I'd probably put... Uh, actually, I don't know what I'd put behind it. Honestly, like, very scarce sort of album reviews, but we at least picked some good ones, you know? Like, I think the only one that like we were iffy on was really that Kid Cudi one. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you with that. Um, I think for me, the best album that we reviewed during that time so far, it's either, it's either between Kanye's or Joy Badass. 
tied between those two for me. But I think I would go with Le Kanye because it's Kanye, you know? It's, you know? I feel you. What about you, Gio? Um, did we do one on Metro Booming's Hero vs. Villains? I think we did, right? Oh, yeah. we did. I forgot about that one. Yeah, we did do a review on that. I don't know. Maybe I just... Hold on. It was at the end of the year, right? Maybe I skimmed past it and didn't notice. Because I could have swore we did one on that. Where is it? Why is it not in this playlist? I'm pretty sure we did. Um, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Dude, what if we well, just imagined recording that? Because like I'm, I'm not crazy. seeing it. Where is? I swore we did one because I specifically remember Dom talking about uh, the ASAP Rocky song the most. That last one, Feel the Fire, was an absolute slapper. Dude, this is weird. I'm not seeing it. You'll find it. It'll be there. Anyways, we definitely reviewed that album. I know for sure we did. We did. Y'all need to review. Oh, here it is. I found it. It was episode 51. Yeah. Y'all need to review Tory Lane's Alone at Prom. Oh, yeah. I've heard that one. It's a yeah. good while ago, that. Oh, yeah. If I had to pick one, it would probably be Heroes versus Villains. Heroes and Villains. That one's a banger. Except for any time Chris Brown came on the track. Oh, yeah. Bro ruined it every single time. And then, uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot to look through in season three. But uh, what would you guys say were some of the funnest episodes we recorded together? I'll, I'll throw one out there from the very start of the season. It was Gio's, like, first influence on the podcast. But also, like, he, he did join for, like, a couple episodes here and there. I know he was there for the Thor Love and Thunder review. But... I think he cemented himself as, like, committed to this podcast when we did that whole world of K-pop one where he brought us all these different K-pop songs to listen to, the music videos to watch, to review. I think that was a fun episode, especially because there was a lot of Dominic either hating on it or bringing up some of the most obscure stuff, like when he saw that stuffed orangutan in the back of the Twice music video. I still remember that. I do not know why they had that. Why was that even on set? Why would they even think to have that? It's an orangutan, man. There was no yeah. on orangutan. <laughs> that one's a classic. The hobbies and dangerous fumes. That one's also that one was also really fun to talk about. Our uh, mm-hmm. our anime review of the a place further than the universe was a real good one. That was a bang. That was mm-hmm. a, that was a classic, bro. I I really still love that anime to this day. That one was real fun. Um, there's all the Overwatch 2 episodes, man. Oh, those were, those, were, those were interesting. I think our funniest one was the Creator Wrestler, where we, like, talked about, like, if we had to, like, create our own gimmicks and stuff. That was a pretty fun one. Especially because Dominic was coming out with some of the wildest ideas. I forgot what I said. I'll review yeah. the I'm pretty sure one of them, you literally created, like, a stereotypical Hispanic character, I'm pretty sure. I did? I think so. I don't remember. I, I, I will have to go back and review, but that was a funny episode for sure. Um, there was the Can We Survive These Horror Movies slash Games episode. That was a real fun one. I remember. I think I think we put Outlast in there, and the moment we saw it, we're like, yeah, no, we're, we're never surviving this. No, 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 I think we did, no, because we said that in Outlast, you, have, you literally have the option just to turn around and go back, you know? Like, realistically, you could just... Yeah, because yeah, you at don't the start have of the first go. Outlast game, you begin as a journalist and you get out of a car in front of the driveway. So you're volunteering to go into an estate asylum when you could just, if realistically, if you were into, you know, into that person per se, whatever. I think his name is Ethan. I don't know. You would just get back in the car and just turn around with no danger to you whatsoever. Mm, true. True. I feel like we should revisit that concept. Yeah, definitely that's one we'll we'll save for the next year or the next season. Definitely one where we'll have to look at more movies and games. Uh, I'll never forget the finale was uh, introducing Five Nights at Freddy's as an option. And we broke down the whole uh, logistics of it all. Like, are we forced to stay there the whole night? You know, is it this and that? And uh, 
I, I think it was, there was also one of the movies. Was it uh, was it Seven Days Gone? Is that what I'm thinking? Or I don't know. There was one where we literally put like none of us are surviving it. Like realistically, none of us are surviving it. Sure, that was I a mean, real fun episode. Oh, well, we, we, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the wrestling spots as well. When I was telling you guys how much would you have to be paid to take some of these spots? That was crazy as well. Yeah, Samoa Joe hurt his nuts in one of the spots. <laughs> that, that part. Uh. Oh man, yeah, we we've had some good episodes this season, but uh, we've definitely struggled with consistency. That's something Gio and I touched on, and I think Dom, you agree. We said that's something we're gonna work on in the next season, you know. And obviously, as the listeners know, we always take the week after the we upload the anniversary episodes to talk ideas, plans, you know. So. We're definitely going to put in the works to be more consistent and commutative, I guess you would say, with uh, our ideas for the podcast, what the vision we have for it all, you know? Yeah. But yeah, th- this season, you know, it had its fun moments, I'll agree. Like, I don't think at all we can say that this was a bad season or an unsuccessful one, especially because with this episode, we've reached 100 episodes in this season. And I think that's pretty crazy to see that we got to a hundred episodes, and that was with that was with halfway through. I'm pretty sure cutting out the uh, the like twice a week episodes, you know. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. So that's pretty fun. And then uh, I guess you know, there's about three minutes left, so I'll, I'll I'll open the floor to you, Dom, like I did with Gio at the end. Overall, how do you feel about the podcast? Not only going forward, but Kind of like how I've asked you every anniversary episode. How do you think you feel you've grown, not only since we started this one, but all the way back in high school, since that's how far you and I go back with this podcasting thing? Oof. Uh, well, we've we definitely grown a lot from first going along with our our teacher, Mr. Solis, to now continue it on on our own. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. We, literally, what seven years in the making now? Seven years. Seven years. Literally three years from a decade. Literally, we already passed half a decade on this. Uh it's it's uh, it's it's interesting. You know, it's how would I say this? It's um, the dedication that I guess bonds us together you know with a friendship and you know and all that cheesy stuff but you know in reality it, it is true it, it's true and i don't know what the future holds for us but I, I hope for the best and stuff obviously there's so many more content that's going to be released and we're definitely going to be reviewing that stuff we have Oppenheimer. we have the finance of freddy's movie that's coming out the barbie uh, movie bro the barbie movie featuring ryan gosling uh Speaking of Ryan Gosling, did you, did you see that he's getting kind of old now, dude? I felt kind of bad, man. I saw that, too. Ooh, he's not the cool guy I saw back in 2011 during the drive movie, dude. It's crazy, man. He's not Black Panther no more. He's not Blade <laughs> Runner <laughs> Oh, Blade Runner, yeah. Oh, man. But uh, I will say this. We're about a minute and 20 left. I think uh, we can all agree that uh, this next season will hopefully be better. And just like every season, always look forward to the end of the year because that's when, like, our best content comes out, you know? Especially because I, I, I don't think there's any argument. Our best episodes are usually always our top ten albums of the year. Also true. The, those are always my favorite to record. It's always so interesting to just see, you know, especially now with Gio, who's, who, did, uh, who did it last year for 2022, and now we're going to be here for 2023. It's definitely always so fun to see just the different music taste between the three of us. But with about 35 seconds left, I've been Jack, joined by... Dominic Castillo. And And Johnny, kind of, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you all for joining for this, or these two episodes. Thank you all for joining us for three years of the podcast. And we will see you all in about two weeks' time, essentially. And who knows where we go. Only thing to look forward to is the future itself. Thank you all for joining, and we'll catch you all next time.